God of War gets right into it. Right off the bat you have a crazy sick boss fight and you think man, what a hook. But then only minutes later, a hundred times crazier boss fight literally comes knocking on your door and you have to kill him like three times. That's basically four fights in the first hour of the game. Then begins your beautiful journey to the top of the mountain. The fights are absolutely brutal, sometimes too brutal. Combat works like this, if you want to do real damage, you use your weapon. But if you use your bare fists, you can bring up the enemy's stun bar and have a chance to do this. Goodbye. The attacks are so precise and snappy, you feel every hit, and when you unlock more moves, they're not just separate power moves, but instead flow naturally into existing combos. Each enemy needs to be encountered in a different way, and most of them make for good one-on-one -on -one fights, which makes you really feel the pressure when facing a group. And that's slow-mo. Incredible. The best parts of this game are the ones that are the most unexpected. When that dragon came out of nowhere, my goodness. When those two gods came out of nowhere and you fought them, my goodness. When you jumped onto the back of that dragon and had a fight while soaring through the air, my goodness. You get so caught up in the excitement of these events that you don't even get the chance to stop and think how they're even possible. If we want to talk about Atreus and Kratos' relationship, Kratos is the fridge and Atreus is the monkey magnet. Quite literally, Atreus zooms onto Kratos from anywhere on the map when you try to climb something. At first, Kratos is a big jerk to Atreus. But as expected, he warms up to him and learns to trust him more. The important thing though, is that when you're put in these situations with Atreus, such as being back to back in the middle of a dark thundercloud as two big jerks are trying to beat you to a pulp, or playing ping pong with this guy's face, you also begin to trust him. And a good ways through the game, you find yourself mashing that square button through an entire fight. Now the story. It's- Hey look at that! What? Yeah, Atreus does that too. Every now and then he'll ask you what's that or what's up there, and you can never tell what you're supposed to look at. Sometimes he's staring at nothing when he says this. Sometimes he's looking at you. And then I'm not so sure anymore. Maybe, maybe I, I am. am mad. Okay, now the story. It's a simple one. Go spread Atreus' mom's ashes at the top of the mountain. But there's so many obstacles that get in the way, causing you to do all these fetch quests and to take alternate paths, and the story doesn't really develop further as you do these things. You learn a little more about the world and some characters, but that's about it. The motivation quickly fades. And when you finally get to the top of the mountain, the game pulls up. You've come to the wrong place, little brother. The highest peak in all the realms is not here in Midgard. It's in Jotunheim, realm of the giants. No! That could not be what she meant. I... I know you're a god. Not of this realm, but there's no mistaking it. He doesn't know, does he? About your true nature, or his own? That is none of your concern. A big part of the story is about Atreus learning that he and Kratos are gods. And when he finally does... But we're gods. We can do whatever we want. Oh boy. They make it seem like maybe he was possessed or something, but it's never really explained. Even with these issues, I still found the game to be a really good experience. There's too many special moments that can't go ignored. And when the game's finally over, you can look back on everything you've done and think, dang, what a journey. Thank you.